I'm Matt Bichar with NareachReit.com here in Phoenix, Arizona for ReitWise 2015, NareEach Law, Accounting, and Finance Conference. Joining me today is Scott McComb, President with Allocation Advisors. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, the regulatory environment tends to be pretty cyclical. Where are we now in terms of the regulatory environment for REITs? Well, you know, you're right. It is a very cyclical pattern we see, and I think we're still in a situation where the pendulum's swinging in the direction of increased regulation. Um, I see it from a perspective of purchase accounting. You know, we work in helping companies with purchase price allocation after they buy uh, property. And you know, in that regard, over the last several years, we've seen increased uh, kind of scrutiny and increased desire by audit firms, SEC, everyone involved to see uh, more and more evidence of you know, the, the assumptions and the due diligence that goes into setting the initial starting values for all the components of an asset that's acquired. And a lot of companies that we work with, they, you know, they're you know, good, smart people that are working on these things, but uh, sometimes don't appreciate the level of detail of documentation that you know, has to go into it. And where are you seeing the most transaction activity in terms of product types and markets? You know, right now with pricing the way it is, we're seeing cap rates that have become very compressed in, in a number of sectors. Almost all sectors have had, have had a good, healthy uh, decrease in uh, cap rates. Most multifamily is probably the most extreme now. We're seeing cap rates down in the four and a half, five you know, percent rate, depending on the market. And that's at a rate where uh, rental growth is really required over the holding term in order to make your target return on that asset. You know, the good news is every indicator right now is that you know, those, those rents will rise over time, but you're putting yourself in a situation where that's now a requirement, and so you're, you're best off looking for opportunities where you can add value to a property. Same thing in the office, in industrial. You know, the, it's very hard to find a good core asset that returns you know, a return that investors can live with unless you find some level of opportunity play. You're gonna put some money in the lobbies, refresh, maybe even reposition the asset a little bit. So a lot of people are trying to get creative with their definition of what core is and add some of that uh, degree of improvement to a property. And lastly, are you seeing many transactions involve, involving distressed sellers? Much fewer than we had over the last several years. You know, beginning in 2011, 12, 13, we did see a number of asset acquisitions and portfolio acquisitions that came from a distressed seller, whether it was the bank or whether it was still in the hands of the seller who needed to figure something out. We're seeing much less of that now, especially on individual asset transactions. What we are seeing is we are seeing still some uh, portfolio assets that are being worked out internally. So you've got multiple investors and uh, they're bringing new money in and everyone's agreeing to take a haircut on the deal you know, internally. Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.